hello welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new my name is Kyla and in this video we're going to talk about the 11 books that I read in the month of November I read nine books and had two DNFs, but we're gonna chat about it all today. So let's just go ahead and dive in. First, I wanna get the DNFs out of the way so we can just say sayonara and not have to worry about it. The first one was Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. This I was going to read as part of the gilmore -thon, the Gilmore Readathon that I participated in. I did do a reading vlog for that video, so I will link it below some of the other books that I mentioned here are also part of that of course but I was going to listen to this on audio for the Asian representation prompt and I got about 20% of the way into this book and like could care less. I was so bored. I didn't care about the plot or the mystery that was happening. In this book, we are following a family and the teenage girl in the family goes missing and then she is found dead and you are kind of following and navigating the family as they find out. And then of course they try to figure out what's going on and through the investigation. But still, I made it to like her funeral and was like and I just was not connecting with any of the characters I do love Celeste Ng's writing that had nothing to do with the writing or anything like that like I loved Little Fires Everywhere I love the book I love the show I just think that this one just wasn't for me it just was not engaging or mysterious or as uh, high stakes as I was hoping it to be. You know, some mysteries you're like immediately engulfed. You're like, oh my God, I need to know what happens when you're presented with something so early in the story. And this one, you're presented with what happens and I'm just, I just didn't care. <laughs> There wasn't enough character building up until that point for me to care. It just wasn't for me. And then the second one makes me so sad. And this is not a DNF forever. This is just a DNF for right now. I would love to come back to this at some point, And that was Thistlefoot. I started reading this and got up to page... 167 so I made it quite far into this and I just at the time I feel like my mind wasn't a hundred percent in it I was expecting this to be way more light-hearted and fun fantasy I was expecting more like house in the cerulean sea under the whispering door and that kind of vibe but instead this is more of like following a Russian folk tale that's like a retelling in a Jewish kind of perspective and that's all well and good. I'm not like here to dismiss history and a folk tale or anything like that. I do find that very interesting but it just makes the writing a little bit heavier and more dense and I was very invested in what was happening with the siblings in this house. In this book we are following two siblings whose great-grandmother or grandmother passes away and they inherit this house that is on chicken legs, which just like had me at the beginning. I was like, yes, I want to know exactly. And then you start to get into it. And of course, they each have like their own background because they've been astray for a while. They're coming back together. They each have little things about them that the, neither one of the other one knows. And then you have the aspect of the house, which was so interesting to me. But then woven into all of this history about the folktale and I just felt like it was way too heavy and way too much for like my brain to handle at the current moment. So I would like to come back to this at some point. I would like to finish it. The writing is absolutely gorgeous. I have started tabbing it because that's how much I was like, oh, some of these passages are absolutely stunning. But I just think it's a little bit too dense for what I was looking for in the moment. I wanted something lighthearted and I got something a little bit more heavy and so I DNF'd for right now. Now let's dive into the books that I actually did read. First, let's cover the audiobooks. So I did listen to two more audiobooks this month. Well, actually, that's a lie. I listened to a lot more audiobooks, but I'm going to cover the other ones when I actually talk about them. But the actual audiobooks that I listened to, the first one was the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. 
What a Title by Grady Hendrix. And this was a three star read for me. I thought this was fun. I love Grady Hendrix's writing. This is a, of course, a horror that takes place in a southern town. And the narrator on the audiobook had a little bit of a twang and it was great. Um, this book also covers a lot of good conversations about women of color and also just women in general and their roles and like a marriage because this takes place in the 80s I believe. I believe this takes place actually in the same neighborhood as my best friend's exorcism which I thought was cool it's just a good like cool way of tying the books together but it's following a separate family yeah I thought there were a lot of really good conversations in here like I said about roles of women and you know what a wife is supposed to do um, but also good conversations around privilege and the police believing women of color and just people of color in general so there were a lot of good conversations woven into this on top of it just being a fun horror vampire story. Um, it just was not like an all-time favorite for me. It was middle of the road. I enjoyed my time reading it. I didn't find it overly scary or spooky or anything. I had fun, but I have a feeling this is going to be one that I just like kind of forget what happens. I'm already forgetting a little bit of what happens. It's not one that's going to stick with me, so it gets three stars. And then the next audiobook that I read was One of Us is a Lying by Karen McManus. This is the first and the one of Us is Lying series. And this was also a three star book for me. I thought it was fun. I thought it was a good mystery slash thriller. This is a young adult and we are following a group of friends who get detention and one of the students dies while in detention. And everyone in this book is a suspect. So this covers like a dramatic friend group while also following the death of this student. It was it a murder? What happened? You're all trying to figure that out. It gets very much like breakfast club kind of vibes. Like that's what I was picturing while these kids were in detention and something was happening. And you have all of those characters, you know, you have the bad boy, you have the popular girl, like you, you they cover all of their bases there. It just was a three star for me. None of the reveals were like super groundbreaking. And Yes, this is young adult and I never fault young adult for reading young because hi, it's called young adult for a reason. That's never a reason for me to like knock off a star. However, this did feel very much like a high school story. Although that was fun, I just felt like I couldn't connect really a lot with the characters and what they were going through and the writing was just kind of like basic. So again, it's three stars. It wasn't bad. I enjoyed my time. The audiobook was really good. The they has a whole cast of narrators, so I highly recommend the audiobook if you're going to read this. I am going to continue in the series. It wasn't enough for me to like not care enough to continue. It just was kind of the middle of the road for me. So let's next dive into fantasy because I only have one fantasy book that I read this month, which is actually kind of crazy. Normally my wrap ups are quite fantasy heavy, but this month it was more about the mystery thrillers. So the fantasy that I did read was The A Court of Frost and Starlight. This is the fourth in the A Court of Thorn and Roses series, the little novella in between, and this was a four star. It wasn't as enjoyable as the other three have been for me. Um, I think it's just because it is a novella. I feel like this didn't really need to to happen. This didn't need to exist. <laughs> I love that it does. I enjoyed it. We get perspectives from all of the different characters, which is cool. Instead of just following one, we get perspectives from all of them, which I thought was interesting and a good time, especially coming off of Wings and Ruin where so much happened. I kind of liked that we got everyone's perspective to kind of see how they were feeling afterwards. But I do think that this could have been like a chapter or two at the end of the last one, beginning of the next one. I don't think it had to be a whole separate novella, but I still enjoyed it. So it gets four stars. So let's move on to the mystery and thrillers that I read this month. The first one was I finished Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I actually started this at the end of October, but I didn't finish it until November. So we're talking about it 
it here. Um, I really enjoyed this. This is very much like a Agatha Christie kind of retelling and there's a lot of those out there and some of them I have really not enjoyed but this one I thought was a really good time. In this one we're following a family who comes to their grandmother's house who lives on an island for her birthday and then she dies and you're left to figure out who done it and then they all start dying and I really enjoyed this. I just thought that the cast of characters in this family were once so relatable, especially if you have a very diverse family. Like they just all have different personalities and I just find that so relatable. Um, so I really enjoyed the family and I loved kind of how over the top some of them were. I also loved their dynamic and you also get flashback chapters from when they were younger because some things start happening during this night that you know are kind of unexplainable and you get flashback chapters to kind of explain those moments so I really enjoyed that. But one of the things that I really, really, really loved about this was the count down to it or count up, whichever way you would like to say it. So we are counting down until they can leave the island because they are stuck there until the tide goes out. So you're following this family as the night goes on and there are more people more of them are dying, but they can't leave. So you get like the 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. And it's just like counting down. And it is so, it just makes it that much more intense and that much like the anxiety that much higher. You just like your heart is racing and you can't read it fast enough. You just need to know what happens the next hour and the next hour and the next hour. And I freaking love that. And this book took a turn that I was not expecting. And usually it is not my favorite thing to see in thrillers. I've talked about it before. I'm not going to say what it is because I do not want to ruin the ending for anyone else who has no idea but I feel like this was done so well that I can't really fault it for that and it wasn't completely like once it happened I was like oh that's not completely out of left field like some thrillers so I feel like it was done really well and even though it's not my favorite thing to see I still really enjoyed it. It didn't take away from the rest of the book for me. So I gave this four stars and I just really enjoyed it and I would highly recommend it if you're looking for a super fast paced thriller mystery slash but I would recommend reading it in October because this takes place over Halloween and I just felt like the vibes of that were perfect. Next we have The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. I read this also for the Gilmore-thon. This was kind of like the small town vibes that I chose. Even though it takes place on the outskirts of London, it takes place in a retirement village which just felt like small town vibes to me. So that's why I picked it and I freaking loved this. I had a blast while reading this. This book follows four friends in a retirement village who have a club. They meet every Thursday and they talk about cold cases and things that are happening and they try to figure them out. And then one of the employees of this retirement village ends up murdered and they take it upon themselves to figure out what happened. And it is just a grand old time. They are a hoot. And if you have ever worked in, volunteered, whatever, in an assisted living, a nursing home, anything, you can picture these people perfectly because there's always like this cast of characters. There's the busy body. There's the one who's just like along for the ride and having a good time. There's the guy who's way too outspoken. And then there's the one that's like the level-headed one trying to keep everyone in line. Like I used to work at an assisted living so I can picture these people perfectly. Like I can picture past residents like inside this book and I just loved it. This also took a lot of twists and turns and there were so many characters introduced that really I did not know 
who done it? And I love that. I love when I'm surprised. This was one of those books where I really went in with like zero expectations. I didn't try to create any sort of theories along the way. I just tried to be in the moment with it and that just made it that much more enjoyable. I gave this four stars. I would highly recommend this as like a cozy mystery. It is so fun, so cute, and so entertaining and hilarious that I just like cannot cannot and I am definitely going to continue in the series. The next one that I read I don't actually have it with me because I had checked it out from the library but that was Jackal by Erin E. Adams and I have a very unpopular opinion about this book I feel like. I gave this book five freaking stars. I loved it. I know so many people who were thrown off by the ending but I really enjoyed it. In this book, we are following Liz who comes back to her hometown for her best friend's wedding, which already I'm there. I love when thrillers are around weddings. It's perfect. But this town has like a history to it. There's been a lot of black girls and girls of color going missing over the years. She comes back and the daughter of her best friend, she goes missing. And so they're trying to figure out what happened, who could have possibly done it. And then you have these flashback chapters of the girls who have gone missing also kind of interwoven. So you kind of have like a dual timeline going on here. Here. and then things go down and this book went there it went there one this book brings up so many conversations one about of course people of color being immediate suspects in everything also the lack of investigation of police when people of color go missing or they're murdered or whatever. Um, those conversations were very heavy in this and I really appreciated it. I also feel like there was a lot of um, history and culture representation in this that I just found really fascinating and things to learn about, things that I didn't necessarily know. And I love when books can educate me at the same time while also being a horror, you know? Like you don't really expect that, but I really appreciate when it's there. Um, but then you have the ending of this book and the ending of this book, I'm not going to spoil by any means, but it went, it went there. It went there and I feel like so many times in horror, at least the horror that I have read so far, I'm not like a seasoned pro, but the horror that I've read so far has always had some sort of explanation to it. And this book went in a way that I just so appreciated it for. And I feel like, like I keep saying, it went there and not a lot of books do that. And I really loved it. And I know that some people were thrown off by the end, they weren't expecting it. But once you kind of read between the lines, like I had a hint of what was going on at like the halfway three quarter mark where I was like, oh, oh, I think this is what's going to happen. There's another little like twist on top of that. But once you kind of like it clicks into place, you're like, is that a possibility? Is she actually going to make the story go there? And then it does. And it's just so genius. Also, the writing in this was really good. I really enjoyed it. I gave this five stars. Like I said, I would highly recommend it. I feel like everyone needs to have their own experience with this book. Don't really like tune out what everyone's saying, tune out what I'm saying. Don't let the other reviews influence you. Just go in, have a grand old time and forge your own opinion of it because I feel like it's definitely worth the read. And then the last set of books that I read in the month of November were all for one vlog. It was my Dark Academia vlog. So if you haven't seen that, I will also link that below as well as in the cards for you. But I read three books for that vlog. The first one was was Bunny by Mona Awad. This was a five star read for me, but it took me a minute to get there. And for good reason, because this book makes you feel lost. I feel like this book is like a fever dream. You are like, what in the world is happening? You have this plot line, but like, is it real? Is it not? I'm not really sure. 
what is reality right now? <laughs> in this book, we are following Samantha, and Samantha is attending a writing program, a very prestigious writing program. And there's only a handful of students in this writing program. And a few of the other students, they are a clique. They're, you know, some bubbly girl who call themselves bunnies. And one night, the bunnies invite Samantha to come over and hang out. And some things go down. And then this plot takes off from there. And like I said, it is like a fever dream. You do not know what's happening. And even by the end of it, it's kind of like an ambiguous ending. And I say that in the terms of like, I feel like everyone has their own interpretation of this ending and what actually happened in this book. This book left me feeling like I needed to do the most research ever, and I did. <laughs> so I watched a bunch of YouTube videos, I read a bunch of Goodreads reviews, and then I took the Reddit deep dive. And after that, and sat on it for a while, it just proves how utter genius this book is. Because once you start reading everything and kind of piecing things together and it clicks into place what actually happened, genius. I have nothing to say, but this book is pure genius. I need you to read it. Just know that you are going to feel extremely lost throughout this. And that's okay. You just keep going. And then at the end of it, you still might feel a little lost. And that's okay. And you might need to do a little bit of research and reading. And that's okay. And then let it click in. And once it does, you'll feel the same way. Now, I do feel like this book is not for everyone, for sure, but for me, the Dark Academia vibes were definitely there, and that's what I was looking for. This was weird and creepy and hilarious, and I loved it. I loved it, I loved it, I wanna read it again. And then the next book that I read for that vlog is A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. This is a young adult. This follows our main character, Felicity, who comes back to her school after being away for a year because her girlfriend passed away at the school. The school has a history of witches and a coven and just all this mystery around their murders. So you have that kind of storyline and unpacking the history of the school while also following Felicity and her coming back to school and meeting her new roommates and a new student named Ellis and this book was the most dark academia of the vlog for sure. When I picture a dark academia Pinterest board this book is on it. Like the tweed, the trousers, just the vibes of these girls and the school, the descriptions of the school, like everything. The aesthetic is on point in this book. However, this book takes a dark turn and yes, I realize that's kind of redundant, dark academia, of course it's dark but a darker turn than I was expecting. And I just felt really uncomfortable while reading this book. I felt for our main character so much and I just felt like she was being preyed upon, that she was being taken advantage of, and it just made me so uncomfortable. Also, she's a very unreliable main character, so there's that kind of added on top of it. And I just, I don't know. I did enjoy it. I gave it four stars. The writing is really good. I loved the story. I loved following what was happening with Felicity as she came back and then also the history of the school and the witchy vibes. Like I loved all of it but it was definitely a lot more heartbreaking and just a lot more dark than I was expecting. That doesn't take away from the story at all. It just kind of caught me off guard and so for that reason it's a four for me. And then the last book that I read in the month of November was For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. This is again another dark academia. I would say this is probably the least dark academia of them. The vibes are there, they're just not as strong as the other ones. In this book we are following Teddy Crutcher who is a teacher at a private school and Teddy thinks he's God's gift to everything. He thinks he is the bee's knees and he is the biggest dick on the planet. And some things happen at this school. Some people start dropping dead and so you're following Teddy 
and you know how he fits into all of this while also following some of the students as well and you're just rooting for this man to go down the entire time you're rooting for this man to fail and he is so creepy and the things that come out of this man's mouth are just atrocious and jaw-dropping and i loved it <laughs> I gave this five stars. I really enjoyed my time with this book. If this book did not have Teddy as a main character, it would have been kind of boring. The mystery, not anything like super groundbreaking, but because you get a lot of it up front, then you're just kind of watching everything unravel, I think is the best way to put it. And it's really entertaining to watch. It's really entertaining to read Teddy's perspective through all of it and also everyone else's perspective. Like I said, you're just rooting for him to fail in every sense of the way. Well, also kind of he's redeeming himself in other ways. It's just so fun and hilarious. Again, very dark as well. The subject matter is very dark, but without him as a main character, this book would have just been like middle of the road, but he just made it that much better and I gave it five stars. I might be getting a little soft in my ratings here, like what in the world, but I can't not. I like keep thinking about it and it keeps making me giggle. So I just five stars for your own good, for sure. And I would highly, highly, highly recommend it. And that is all that I read in the month of November. I really hope you enjoyed this little wrap up. I would love to hear what you read in the month of November. Let me know what your favorite book was and what your least favorite book was. And if you have plans to read any of these, definitely let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe while you are here. Turn on the bell so you never miss a video and I will see you in my next one. Bye! If you and I, the few.